So in this lecture, I will start to prove uh, some properties of the integral. So uh, the lecture will be divided essentially in two parts. We will first show that um, the integral defined for non-negative functions, so if I take uh, f and g non-negative functions and a constant c, which is also non-negative, is that the integral is uh, linear. So we'll prove that f plus g d mu, it's equal to f d mu plus g d mu. And then we will prove that c times f d mu, it's equal to c times f d mu. And once we, we prove these two uh, properties, we will start um, proving a long list of properties of functions which are not, uh, well, which may not be uh, positive. And this is a long list, so we will prove uh, item by item all these properties. So before we start, uh, I will prove certain properties of the integral of simple functions. So I want to show um, that if f and g are simple functions, then um, the integral of f plus g is equal to the integral of f plus the integral of g. And uh, recall that uh, these integrals might be infinite, so if one of them is infinite, like I'll have on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side plus infinity, so this is allowed. And then now if k is a non-negative real number, I also want to prove that k times f, the integral of k times s, is equal to k times the integral of f. So we are proving that the integral on the space of simple functions is uh, linear functional. And of course, it follows from um, this identity that if I take g and f to uh, simple non-negative simple functions such that g is less or equal than f, then the integral of g is less or equal than the integral of f because I can always write f as g plus f minus g since g it's less or equal than f, f minus g, it's a simple function, and it's also non-negative. So by linearity, we have that the integral of f is equal to the integral of g plus the integral of f minus g. But now the integral of f minus g since f minus g is a non-negative simple function, it's non-negative, and therefore at this expression it's greater or equal than i of g. Right. So this is a simple consequence of the uh, first claim that I will now prove. So we will prove these two uh, statements. So let's say that f is a simple function, so f can be written as a simple function as certain finite sum of non-negative number c j multiplying the indicator of some set e j. So I'll just remember that we are working on a probability uh, measure space, so a set, a sigma algebra, and a measure, and that here I'm assuming that e j uh, forms um, partition of the set omega in the sense that each set ej belongs to f and that the union of ej is equal to omega. So the sets ej are the joint 2 by 2 and their union form uh, the space omega and uh, for similar reasons, well of course here cj uh, it's non-negative because we are taking non-negative simple functions. And in the same way, 
uh, G has a certain decomposition as a sum from 1 up to M of, say, DK, E, FK, where the sets FK have the same property as the sets EJ, and uh, the non-negative real numbers DK have the same properties of CJ, so I will not uh, rewrite them. So, as we see, since uh, EJ and FK form a partition, I can always rewrite EJ as the disjoint union of EJ intersection FK. And in the same way, I can write FK as the disjoint partition of uh, FK intersection EJ. And from that, we obtain that the indicator of EJ is equal to the sum of the indicators of EJ intersection FK. Right, so uh, if I replace here uh, the indicator of EJ by the sum of the indicators of EJ intersection FK, I obtain that uh, F, in fact, has an alternative uh, form as a simple function as the sum from G from 1 to N, K from 1 to M, CJ the indicator times the indicator of EJ intersection FK. And for similar reasons, G can also be written as summation in J and K of DK, the indicator of EJ intersection FK. Now, summing F and G, I obtain that F plus G can be written as a sum in G and K of CJ plus DK, the indicator of EJ intersection FK. And this means that F plus G, it's a simple function, and has this representation as non-negative real numbers multiplying um, the indicator of a partition of the, of the set omega, a partition which belongs to the sigma algebra F. Now it's easy to conclude that IF plus G is equal to IF plus IG. So let me erase this piece to conclude. Well, by definition of the integral, by definition of the integral of this simple function, the integral of this, uh, the simple function F plus G is just the summation of GK of CJ plus DK mu of EJ intersection FK. So this is just uh, the definition of the integral of a simple function. Now we can rewrite this sum as a sum in first CJ. So sum in J CJ times the sum in K of mu EJ intersection FK. And for similar reasons, I have a second term which can be written as sum in K DK and now sum in J of mu EJ intersection FK. Now, if we remember that FK forms a partition by, and these sums are all finite, so here is a sum from K from 1 to M, and here sum in J from 1 up to N. By the additivity of mu, this sum of these sets, it's equal to mu since they are the joint mu of the union, and the union, since FK forms a partition, is just EJ. So this first line, it's equal to the sum in J of CJ mu of EJ. And for the same reasons, since EJ now forms a partition of omega, we can sum over J here to obtain that the second line 
it's equal to the sum in k of dk mu fk. Well, but since f, well, in fact, um, I erased, but I could have concluded here instead of, uh, I'm sorry for that, instead of going up to this point. So uh, if I now observe that f it's equal to uh, g, the sum over j, k, c, j, the indicator, we obtain from um, that expression of f that uh, this first line is in fact the integral of f and that the second line is the integral of the simple function g, proving that, as I claimed, that the integral of f plus g is equal to the integral of f plus the integral of g. So this argument I presented here, it's uh, useless. But just um, if, you remind, if you remind that f was equal to the sum of cj, the indicator of ej, from that formula, I could also conclude that this sum is equal to i of f, and that this sum is equal to i of g. But this is uh, not needed, since we could conclude directly from uh, these two expressions that they are equal to i f plus i g in view of these uh, formulas for the simple function f and g. So, well, at least I hope I convince you um, that the uh, integral is, uh, well, that the integral of sum of two uh, simple functions, non-negative simple functions, it's equal to the sum of their integrals. And now uh, let me show you that uh, if I multiply a simple function by a uh, non-negative real number, we have uh, the second relation to complete the proof of uh, the fact that the integral is linear over the simple functions. So for that, um, let me raise what I just wrote. And let's recall that, uh, let's say that f is equal to the sum in j from 1 to n cj the indicator of ej, where ej forms a partition of sets in the sigma algebra f. Then if I multiply f by k, this is equal to the sum of k times cj, the indicator of ej. And from this identity, we obtain that k times f, it's also a simple function. Now by definition of the integral, the integral of this simple function, it's equal to the sum of um, k times cj, the measure of ej. And this is equal to k times the sum of cj times the measure of ej. And uh, by this formula for f, which express f as a simple function in terms of this partition, we obtain that this is equal to k times i of f, proving uh, our second claim. So um, we proved, we just proved that the integral is linear among uh, non-negative simple functions.